Hi, I'm Carl, and I'm here to talk about Futel. Um, Futel, you can see two examples of it in the lobby. It's um, what we are is a Portland phone company, which is um, all terrestrial phones, all stationary phones, which is run by me and several other volunteers. Um, and what we do is we put free pay phones on the sidewalks and alleys and other public places in Portland. And we also have one at Right to Dream 2 in Portland. So we got one here on Clinton Street, Southeast Clinton. Got one here on Taylor Street, Southeast. Here's this one's in Northeast Ainsworth. This one is an alley off of Killingsworth. <laughs> um, and this one is in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Actually on the wall of the old Bell Telephone building. Uh, yeah, across from a bus station. Um, it's a great location. Um, and we also have, like I mentioned, we have a phone at Right to Dream 2. That one is for their use. I mean, if you walk up, they might let you use it. But we are basically giving them free, uh, uh, free, free phone service. Um, and the, uh, oh, we also have an incoming line. So you can call in and use all of our features from, uh, from this number here to call in. Um, the, the technical aspect of this is not very exciting. Um, we're all running off of basically salvage equipment here. Um, we have a, a, a salvaged phones, salvaged um, enclosures and, uh, and booths and stuff like that, pedestals. Um, this, is a, this is a Linksys router running DDWRT, although now we're running OpenWRT um, because we use that for VoIP clients. Uh, we use little SIP boxes that I get off of eBay or whatever, which is a real pain because when they're carrier locked, they're worthless to us, which is just evil. When they have all this energy went into creating this thing, and now it's, they want to lock it to Vonage or whatever. Um, and uh, cloud services, digital ocean boxes. And then we just buy, um, we buy VoIP service and give it away. Um, and we have other stuff, websites, zines, and an uh, IRC bot, of course. So. Um, that, and so what you just heard, that's what Futel is. It's just, we're just sticking phones up and putting them on the street, letting people use them for free. Um, and it's not, a, it's not a technologically exciting thing, it's a socially exciting thing. And that's really what I talk about here. Um, so uh, what we offer is free calls to most of North America. This, this, this is a plate you'll see, a little info plate you'll see on the phones. And it's actually out of date, because now we have Mexico, Canada, Greenland. Um, pretty much everywhere um, north of Mexico, north of America, except for Cuba, of course, because you can't do business with Cuba. Um, and we offer voicemail. You can set up your voicemail on the phone and then call in the incoming line to leave or, or, or check your messages and stuff like that. We got some uh, directories of useful numbers and social service numbers, which is mainly 211 is the main social service number, but we put other stuff in there. Um, um, and uh, the directory of numbers that's useful to call, like the mayor, if you dial one from the directory, you can talk to the mayor of Portland. <laughs> um, we got a voice conference, uh, and we got what I call the payphone shotgun, which dials every payphone I know about simultaneously, that everyone that has an incoming line, until someone picks it up. Um, we got the, uh, what we call the wildcard line, which is our audio zine. Um, we, uh, did I mention the phone conference? So you can just call in and talk on the conference. but. The, the, the audio, the wildcard line is a, um, it's like a live radio show, but it's call and response, really. You, so so you, it's not live. You call in, you leave your message, and then we pick the interesting ones and play them and then comment on them, and then people can respond to those, too. Which is kind of a, um, a, a homage to one of the things that inspired me to start this, which was the Apology Line, which is an art project in the 80s and 90s, which was basically voicemail as an art project. It was great. Um, and uh, we also have human operators. So if you call, uh, if you dial zero from any few telephone, it'll ring an operators, and usually someone will pick it up, and you can uh, ask whatever question you might have or talk about whatever you want. Um, most people just use it to, you know, look up numbers or addresses or something like that, but some people have asked for some interesting stuff, you know, or just talk about <laughs> advice or stuff like that, yeah. So, I mean, what we say is, like, if you don't have a human to talk to, we can provide a human for you to talk to. Um, so that's, that's what we do. This was, oh, this is interesting. That, that's our motto. Operators are sometimes standing by. Um, this was funny because for a grant uh, application, we wanted to show that we had matching funds. So we got Beeline to donate ad space for our phones, which is really funny because we're not like the kind of 
service that buys ads. So we had ads on, on, the, on the streets. Um, so um, that's, that's what we do. Um, that's, the, uh, that's, that's what we're providing. It's a, it's a service. It's a, it's a cross between a social project, a social service project, and an art project. And the form is telephones. And the reason we do this, well, it's, there's many reasons for doing this. One is just to do it, but um, because it's a good service that people can use. But um, I like, I, I just like phones, pay phones especially, and urban furniture. I like these um, computers, networks, that you just stick on the streets and anyone can walk up and use them. And it's, it's, it's very public, it's very egalitarian, it's urban, and it's part of the urban landscape that I never saw as disappearing. I always I thought they would always be there, but they're not. They're, they're going away because everyone has a cell phone in their pocket, which is so much more convenient. But there's the constraints of the public phone give you something, too. And I hated to see them going away. So this is, this is a pay phone that was on MLK. I got hit by a car. And uh, they didn't replace it. They just, uh, they just took it away, and it's gone now. And I really wanted it because I, I was like, oh, if I have a white van, I, like, it's, there's, a, there's a perfect place to just steal it because only one bolt was holding it down and, and the guy line. So it'd be really easy to steal. And there's a cop station just two blocks away. So if in the middle of broad daylight we showed up with a white, white van, like no one would have stopped us because who would do that, right? But I didn't, so, so it's gone. Hopefully a scrapper got it and not freaking quest. So, uh, so I didn't say that going, so I, want, I just wanted to see more phones out there. And another inspiration was, of course, phone freaks. Um, this is the cover of a zine from 1971, Youth International Party Line. Um, the phone freaks were very interesting because um, at the very, when I was just like learning about hacker culture, I mean, the phone freaks are like some of the earliest m large hacker groups that, that just made up of ordinary people because that was what, that was the computer that you got to interact with in the 70s and a lot of the 80s too. Like if you were an ordinary person, you're not a researcher, you're not an academic or whatever, or whatever, uh, a computer operator, this was a computer network that extended onto payphones on the street and into your house. And the control for these phones was in band. It was tones that w went through the phone just, to, just by making noises into the, into the speaker and all that. So um, these hackers just, of course, being hackers, they wanted to explore it. And they started playing with it and messing with it. For many, many reasons, they would do that. Um, ha hacker nature, to, to explore it, to do fun stuff, do things like route calls all the way around the world just to call your neighbor and stuff like that. And also to steal service, too. They, they wanted to steal stuff and get free calls, so they did that. And there was a big countercultural idea, too, of just, you know, the, it, the phone company was the man. It was, it was a big... Uh, uh, monopolistic thing, so you just wanted to, you wanted to steal from it. Why wouldn't you? So, this is one of our many inspirations. We are the opposite of freaks. We are buying service and giving it away. So that's you know we're not, we are not freaks. We are inspired by by the use of the phone as something that you want to play with. This is another inspiration I mentioned. The apology line. This guy was great, Alan Bridge. He put these flyers up in New York City saying, apologize, if you've, you've done something wrong, so you must apologize. And all it was was a voicemail, was, a voice, was an answering machine. It wasn't even voicemail back then. And you would call, you would leave your apology, and he would collate them together and, and like play the interesting ones. And then he, you could respond to those apologies, because that's all it was, was an answering machine. And then he, there was like this, like, the, the, a lot of conversation going on. Um, I, I, I had free phone calls when this was going on in like the 90s, so I called this every week and listened to it. It was great. Um, so that, those are the artistic reasons. Uh, and then, like I said, service is another reason. I, I put up the first phone. I was interested to see who would use it. Um, one reason I did all this, there was a guy who would mow my lawn, but he couldn't keep his phone paid up. Um, so he would be just pushing his lawnmower, asking if I wanted my lawn mowed. And if I didn't, I thought, well, this guy could really use a voicemail box, so why don't I just put it up and see if he uses it, um, and see if who else uses it, and people use it. We, we, uh, there were 14,000 calls made in 2017 off of our phones. So this is a service that people really use. Um, and not, you know, you see a lot of people who look down and not using it, but uh, a lot of people drive up, this one person drives up in an electric car, or was driving up uh, last year, in an electric car, I recognized her as a, as a frequent user of, of one of the phones. And like, this person can afford a cell phone if they want. Like, they have a reason to not 
maybe, maybe, maybe they just didn't have service. I don't know, but who knows? Maybe they were paranoid. I, there are many, many reasons, but it's, a, it's something people want to use for whatever reason. For good reasons and bad reasons, too. I mean, there's, there's people who use the phones that I don't want, you know, like there's, there's probably people making, you know, calls that are not pleasant on the phone and all that, but I can't really filter that out. I just want to give it to them. The good reasons outweigh the bad, and I want to see who uses it. So that's what, that's, it's a, it's a service project. Um, and it's an artistic project, too. This is another, um, this is another plate you'll see on all of our phones, most of our phones, because in most pay phones, sorry, I didn't enlarge this, but most pay phones have a, um, one of these plaques in the upper left, and it tells you how to use the phone. And it says, the first thing is stop. That's the first thing it says up there. It says stop, listen for tone, or no, it's like stop, listen for tone, enter coins, or enter coins, or something like that. And the first thing is stop. Like, you must use this phone correctly, or else, you know, it's, it's bad. You're using it wrong. And I'm like, that is not what I want to tell people. I'm telling them, do what you want with this phone. You know, it's friendly. So, um, so I like putting this, like this is a, it's urban camouflage to put this out there. So I have those, I have that other plaque you saw there. I, have, I put little rants on them because I love watching how, I love seeing how there's all these like instructions. Everyone's trying to tell you what to do by putting up signs and stuff like that. Like all these like instructions on how to operate the, your life and all that. I'm like I am not going to tell you that. Um, I'm going to sneak a little rant in what I do. So it's a, it's a, uh, it's a way of sticking something out there on the streets that people aren't expecting to see it, really. And so that lets me sneak um, artistic content out into the world. It's a very urban thing. I'm not a big fan of, I'm not, I don't have any problem with people going to festivals, Burning Man, galleries, and stuff like that. We put up phones in galleries and stuff like that, too. But, but I, I don't find that very interesting. I find it interesting to put these phones out in the streets where any old schmuck can use them, really. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a way of getting art into the community, really, is what I like to do. So, and the final reason for doing this is kind of because we can. So like, I feel like we're living in a time, I don't have to tell you guys this, this time of extreme geek power. Like, you guys know that because you're hardware hackers, you know. So this is a time when um, things like the Arduino, I'm really bad at, at like firmware and uh, hardware stuff, but the Arduino let me play with, do little things and like um, hack stuff together very easily. You know, that, that was the one, there's other ones too, but that was, that was the one that kind of opened it to, to unskilled people in that field. And if you think of a phone company, like 10, 20 years ago, um, who would have been able to do this? You'd need thousands or millions of dollars, you'd need, you'd need specialized hardware, you'd need rooms full of equipment, stuff like that. And in this case, a handful of geeks can, can set up a new phone company that's publicly usable by people. And I always, have, I always have to have some kind of project going like that. I always have to have something going, and uh, I was really inspired by Bunny's talk, and also the, 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 uh, the badge hacking talk right before, just like, just do it, and like, you might, might be a good idea or might not, but just, just keep a, keep, keep a project in your life to going. If, if I don't do that personally, I start kind of, I get depressed really. So I have to start these, these uh, usually harebrained projects and just, uh, um, I'm not sure if they're good ideas or not until they start going and then I, then I try to evaluate them. So that's an important part of a project like this is evaluation. Because everything costs money and time to do. And, uh, I'm, I'm out of slides, so I'm just going to kind of like try and find one that's, that's like based on what I'm doing. But anyway, if anyone has a question, there's like 10 minutes, late, 10 minutes left, so go ahead and ask a question. But raise your hand or something. But yeah. First thing that comes to my mind is, have you written an article for 2600? No, no, I have not contacted 2600. I even went to Hope once, and I didn't bring anything to show them there. I know. <laughs> it's, it's wrong. I know. I know. Second question, do you have some of those stickers, those yeah, I do have some futile stickers. I can, I can give them away, too. I've got some zines, too, but I like to get money for those to fund futile. Because futile is currently broke, I get all this out of, out of grants and stuff like that, and I'm really bad at finding grants. I'm, it's, it's not my... I, uh, this, I mean, I'm learning all this as I go along, and so I'm doing this by art. Art grants is how I do it. And it works, but um, I haven't been as successful in 2018 as, as doing that. So I, try to, so I try to get the money back from my zines that I print. So, hmm, yeah? Um, well, so when I'm putting up a new phone, I try to get a thousand bucks to cover the hardware, um, including like when one breaks, you know, replacing and breakdown and stuff like that, and the service for a year. 
Um, and I mean, but what I do is I get grants and I try to keep the existing phones running off of the money I get. They kind of ride on the current grant. So I, I mean, I keep track of my expenses very well, but uh, uh, back of the envelope, probably a thousand bucks a year for just for the service, not including anything physical for all the existing phones. Um, uh, but all in all, including everything, hardware, um, service, you know, like, you know, buying coffee for people helping install phones, stuff like that, um, 2,500 to 3,500 bucks a year. That's what I'm doing right now. I really want to get a bigger grant, be able to hire at, at, um, at very low wages, like volunteer style raises, a community development person who would be able to find new ways of income and, and site, sites to do phones. You know? So that, those are two things that are really the hardest thing to do in this thing is get the money and get the sites to put a new phone in. So that, I mean, like, this is not my day job. So, you know, I'll, it's, it's, uh, that's the thing is like, uh, you have to, for all these things, like, I really like what Bunny was saying, just do, like, you know, have a soul project, but you have to evaluate what you're doing. I, 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 I find that I have to continuously evaluate what I'm doing because it costs money and time to do all these things. And we have to find ways to benefit the people working on the projects. And that's what will make it sustainable. I really want this to be a project where I can get hit by a bus and it will continue in the future. So I always have to think about how are the people getting benefits, um, the, the benefited the people working on it. And for me, that benefit is like, you know, people have come up to me on the street and thanked me for doing this, like recognize me from a talk. I'm like, that's like, all right, just, you know, keep, you know, like that's like, That'll, you know, that'll just keep me doing it. That's great, you know. And so the people working on it, too, I try to, like, you know, I give them, I do things like um, we have a party at the end of the year. I buy, a, I buy a bar tab, and I do, like, a volunteer appreciation thing and make sure people know, like, this person dug a ditch, you know, or whatever, stuff like that. Um, letting people be a part of that and getting the benefits of working with that. Um, but I do think that um, that is an important part of this project is, um, the constraints of the project are great because this is so. This is a, uh, um, I you know this is a art project where the medium is a phone, so the medium is a audio medium. It's something you can pick up and just do, and that's and and the other important part of the medium is it's a payphone that can take abuse. That's what they're made for. So I can le this is left out on the street all night, you know, in public, and uh, so that those constraints give us the freedom to do a lot of stuff. It lets us make it accessible, because all you have to do is, all you have to do is be able to speak and hear to use it. I would love to get a TDD phone, by the way, and uh, um, those are like, I think, 400 bucks for the TDD part. Um, at least that's what eBay was saying about them. But, so the, but even without that, the constraints are very low, so it's very accessible to people. And um, you know, most people can use them, and you don't, not only that, but you don't need an app. You don't need a device, you don't need an app to just walk up and use it. You don't need an identity. We don't track anything. We don't know, we don't, you don't have to identify yourself to use a phone. You know, you, like if you use our voicemail features and other features, you need a password to use them, but you don't, we don't connect you with that password. We're not trying to get anything from you that requires us to do that. So that is a constraint, like we, because we don't track you. And that gives us freedom to, to do stuff like make this a, an app, a, a rather a project that reaches people. Um, there's, uh, here, what, what's fun to look at? I really, I really like the apology line. This was also a very, because it has the same constraints too. Like this is just, all it was was an answering machine. But that let anyone, it was cheap for him to run and it let anyone call it up and use it. And um, really, it, like all he did was attach a theme to a very simple media. I would, uh, I would love to do it in other places. I'd love to do one in Detroit. Um, what I need is someone on the site that can like troubleshoot, replace equipment and stuff like that. So I got it out there because I work I work for dual security out in Ann Arbor, and so that's how I um, was able to like network people there and get a site out there. So um, a person at Duo, actually the, the CEO of Duo, Doug Song, knew some knew the guy who's um, setting up that building there, and was able to introduce me, and he was interested. That's, so that's how I was able to do that. I um, I'm 
I'm really excited about a future phone in Detroit. I hope there will be one someday. That's, that's uh, because I, I like to like kind of bump around Detroit whenever I go out there, and I've never seen a working payphone in Detroit, which surprises me. They're all smashed up. You know. Um, that, and that's pretty much it. That's, uh, I really like the, that, and that's the lesson I kind of want to give about this. It's easy to, it's easy to make projects. It's easy to, uh, I mean, it's not easy. It's, um, it's, um, it's, it's, do, no, no, what, what I mean to say is that, like, like, it's, it's easy to think about ways to use, you know, your powers to do complex things. And, like, this is what everyone here is talking about. Like, this, look at this exciting thing I made, you know. For me, the hard thing is, like, getting that project out there without doing something like quitting, you know, making it your day job or, or, you know, you know, I got, you know, feed, I got to feed my family. So I don't want to like, I would, I would love to like, I'm ready to burn out. I'm a software engineer by, by, you know, by dad. I'm ready to burn out and just like get some like, like low paying job and not worry about that. But it, uh, I'm not ready to do that. You know, I want, I kind of need to like live the straight life for, you know, a couple of years, more years at least or something. So, so I like the idea of, um, finding a way to make a niche for your passion project, you know, whether that's low money, low time, getting involvement from other people or stuff like that. And the way I find to do that is with the constraints of the constraints of the media. So if it's cheap, if it's a, if it's a thing that's cheap to put out there, that's great. If it's a thing that's accessible, that's, that's great. That's the kind of thing I want to, that's the, that's my message of the talk, really. Um, there's also, and but like, as I mentioned, there's two of these phones in the lobby right now. If you want to, those are just playing exactly what uh, what you hear on the phones that you get in the uh, that that do you see on the streets. Um, it's Mother's Day tomorrow. Call your mom. I call my mom on a few telephone every week. Uh, uh, it's great because it confuses her because one of the numbers is in Astoria. So uh, like every, she's like, "Where are you doing Astoria?" So. I was going to say, have you heard that This American Life episode about the wind telephone? No. It's like a phone that some tsunami survivor set up in Japan that people like sort of pretend to talk to their dead relatives and it's like see what you don't want to like cry at your desk to, like listen to it. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Montreal a little while ago and it's a big Leonard Cohen exhibit at the MFA. It's from Leonard Cohen from Montreal. And uh, one of the things they had in there was um, a payphone where you could pick it up and it was an answering machine Leonard that had like his edited his voice. Like, hey this is Leonard, I'm on a long journey and I'm going on the back Anyway, and then uh, out in there, um, in the entrance to the museum, they had this car, which I guess had some significance for his life, I don't know much about it. But you get in the car with a bunch of strangers on the radio, if you turn the radio dial, you play people's voicemails that they left on the phone. So yeah. You have a bunch of people just listening to them. It was kind of like this, listening to the and that kind of thing is nice because like the the act of talking to the phone like put like lets you express like or rather prompts you express like that. We did a similar project which I want to develop more called uh, Voices from Beyond the Veil, which was uh, it was a phone that you could talk to dead people in, um, and what it was was is just suggestive. I mean, it was an introduction that set up the scene that made you think of what you were doing, and then it was um, you would talk and you would hear kind of vaguely human noises when you weren't talking. That would make you feel like you couldn't quite understand the voice or something like that. Or you'd hear a dog or a, a chair scraping or something like that. So you'd, you would provide that entropy of what, you were, of what was going. You know, it's, it's a small thing. It's just, it's just someone saying, talk to Leonard or something like that. But the entropy comes from you, the, the, the way of like what that actually means to you and all that. Yeah. Yeah. I forget that. I forgot that. No. And, and I feel that way. Like a lot of the phones act in ways I did not expect sometimes. Like uh, um, there's enough randomness, there's enough entropy in the network that I like, I, there are, I, I attribute it to spirits. Yeah. Because if you talk in the phone enough, like some of your pattern will print on there. And a lot of people talk on the phone. You know, the circuits. Uh, the, the circuits have been moving and like been moved by a lot of voices, so there's 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 probably something going on in there. Am, am I getting over? A, are we done? Th thanks, everyone.